It's finally here dudes, after 6 long years since this Gaia 5 came out, we finally have a new entry in the series with this Gaia 6. In that waiting time, Nipponichi Software has brought many of the older games to the Nintendo Switch and PC through ports and re-releases, and it's exactly because of this that it comes as quite a surprise that this Gaia 6, at least for now, is a Nintendo Switch exclusive outside of Japan. Not only that, this Gaia 6 also comes with a lot of bold changes, and in this video I'm going to show and tell you everything you need to know about this game. So whether you are new to the Disgaea series or a veteran that cannot wait to get into the latest game, make sure to stick to the end as this video will answer all the questions that you have. And if not, just drop a comment and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Also, if you like these kinds of videos and want to stay up to date on the latest anime inspired in Japanese games, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to not miss anything. Now without further ado, let's get started. Hi, dude. When someone asks me to describe the Disgaea games, I always tell them that it's a grid-based strategy RPG with a vibrant cast of characters, witty dialogue, a deep combat and progression system and a very grindy post-game where you need to become game-breakingly strong in order to defeat the ultimate boss. So yeah, while the Disgaea games are the same at their very core, it's one of those games where the developer tries to exceed or at least match your expectations with each and every release. Changing features, adding features, removing features, changing the art style, Disgaea has evolved a lot over the years. And much like titles that do the same, some changes are well received and others not so much. Disgaea 6 is full of these changes which I will also address throughout the video, but for now let's start with the main characters. You play as Zed, an edgy looking teenager that's actually one of the weakest races, a zombie. For reasons I won't spoil, he is hellbent on defeating the God of Destruction which, as the name implies, is the strongest being in the universe. Normally a zombie wouldn't be able to defeat him but Zed has access to a very powerful spell called Super Reincarnation. This allows him to be reborn while keeping the power he gained before dying. Every time he reincarnates in the story he wakes up in a different world and it's in these worlds where he meets the companions that join him on his journey. Each of the companions is unique in both personality and design and they all go through personal character arcs that focuses on their personal development. The storytelling is as good as it has always been, combining both comedy with touching moments that always catch me off guard. The gameplay will feel familiar to anyone that has played this Gaia before. It's a grid based strategy RPG where you send out your units to take out the enemy units. The strategy part mainly comes into play with your positioning. For each battle you need to keep in mind what the attack range of your character is, what the attack range of the enemy character is and if there is a positive or a negative effect on the place that you're currently standing. Moving your units separately will give you the ability to cover more ground and get into fights quicker, while moving units as a group brings out more damage through combination attacks, but it will take you longer to travel across the map. The way the stages are designed, the game demands you to make decisions between the two all the time, but even if you mess up there's nothing to worry about as you don't lose anything for being defeated and you can simply try again. The early stages are really straightforward, but I think it's best to view the mid game and the late game stages as puzzles that you need to solve, and it's because of this that the game the game encourages you to use different type of characters as some are more effective than others in certain situations. If you're not into all this puzzle mumbo jumbo though, you can always grind extra levels and power through with brute force. That said, leveling your characters is just one way of making your party stronger and honestly, I'd argue that in this Gaia 6 levels don't really say anything. Do you remember the super reincarnation spell I mentioned earlier? It's not just a story aspect but it's actually a core feature of the game. Every time you super reincarnate your level gets reset to 1 but you get to keep most of your stats and receive karma points. These points can then be used to unlock other passive effects like being able to move further, jump higher or even permanently increase the damage that you deal. Aside from this, there are also character specific challenges called demerits that give you extra karma points and can grant you even more passive effects. At the skill shop you can tremendously increase the power of your abilities. At the squad shop you can group characters together to get more buffs. And finally at the juice bar you can straight up increase the base stats of each individual character. In other words, this game offers many many ways to make your character stronger and I haven't even gotten to the part about the weapons, armor and class ranks yet. I can imagine that all of this can sound overwhelming but don't worry as in order to beat the story you don't have to use all of these things. And as you progress through the chapters the game mentions these systems one by one so you do not get overloaded with information either. I think this kind of shows the conflict that the Disgaea developers have been going through. On one hand they want to keep things that makes this guy a lot by its community which includes the insane power your characters can have and the amount of growth customization you can play around with but on the other hand they want to appeal to newcomers without making them feel like 
like they needed this guy a PhD in order to play this game. I really think they did the best they could in this regard and I'd even go as far as to say that this is the most accessible and beginner friendly Disgaea to date. And this is also largely because of the auto battle and auto repeat functions which I have some mixed feelings on. As the name implies you can enter a stage, enable these two things and the game will play itself. I'm at the point in my life where I'm constantly busy and have very limited time so I am really happy with these features as it will greatly reduce the grindy barrier that the post game always has. But what I'm not happy with is that these options are there from the very start. As I mentioned before I see the stages in this guy are more like puzzles and in order to clear them you need to put everything you've learned in previous stages into practice. By allowing autoplay from the get go you enable players to not have to learn these things and it becomes more like watching a let's play of the game. I think these functions should only exist to reduce the grindy nature of the game and I would have liked it more if the auto battle and auto repeat would only be unlocked after you beat the story or at least beat the stage before you can auto play that stage. With that said, the auto battling isn't perfect as it does struggle with stages where certain things need to be prioritized, but that's where one of the coolest new features comes in, Demonic Intelligence. This pretty much allows you to program algorithms into each individual character to have them behave in certain ways during automatic play. And even though this probably sounds really difficult, it only is if you want to be. Because you can set up very simple algorithms like, okay, if your HP is below 50%, I want you to heal yourself before trying to attack an enemy. At the same time, you can set up more complex algorithms like, okay, first check if there is a chest on the field, because if there is, I want you to take out that first. If not, I want to see if there's a geo block on the field and take that out. If there isn't a geo block either, just do a quick check to see if my HP is low enough 50% because then I want to heal myself. But if my HP is fine but one of my allies has low HP, you need to heal that character first before doing anything else. But if there are no special things on the field and everyone's HP is A-OK, -okay, just walk up to the enemy and attack it. I think this amount of control is really cool because you're not just telling the game to play itself but instead to play itself by your rules. Now if you've been watching this video up until this point you may have noticed something. Well, two things actually. One is that everything is in 3D now and two, that the frame rate kind of sucks. I promise you this is not my editing software acting up, nor is it your internet connection. The game simply doesn't run well on the Nintendo Switch. In the options you have three modes, graphics, balance and performance and honestly this option is something you'd normally expect on PC games or mobile phone games because in those situations the developers don't really know how much power your hardware has. But with consoles like the Nintendo Switch this information is more than known to them. By default the game is set to graphics mode and the moment you enter your base for the first time it just feels really bad and demotivating. I'm not sure how many frames per second you actually get but I'm sure it's not even 30. If you switch the mode to performance however, the frame rate is good but everything looks like a blur. It's kind of what a person that wears glasses see when they take them off and normally they can work around it by squinting a little bit but that helps only if your eyes are the problem and not whatever you're looking at. It's no secret that I love the Disgaea art style and I think the 3D models look great and still manage to capture the same charm as the 2D models did. Sadly the same cannot be said for the little story cutscenes if they can even be called that because as you can see the models are still limited to a set number of poses and expressions. This is something that works well in 2D but it just looks off-putting in 3D. That said, the models are shown best in the different special attack animations. Each character has their own attacks and the movement shown in those scenes looks good and fluid. I think that if they would have made the story cut scenes look like this it would have been much better and on top of that you wouldn't have to deal with the performance issues either because everything is pre-rendered that way. Now I've already talked about some of the new or changed systems but I quickly want to mention some other changes that I've noticed throughout my playthrough. The first is that Mega Change has been removed. This was a feature where you could transform your monster characters into weapons to use for your human characters. This gave you access to unique skills and provided EXP for both characters instead of only one character. The experience system has been changed as well. In older titles the character that defeats the enemy gets the experience and in this Gaia 6 everyone receives EXP but only after they clear the stage. The amount of playable classes has been reduced significantly. A lot of the characters and monsters that you could play are simply gone. Even some fan favorites like the Nekomada and my personal rock in any situation the female healer. In turn we do get some new classes like the ones shown on screen right now and even with the roster cuts we do get to use different types of characters so in theory we don't really lose any utility but we are talking about the series that brings back all the main characters from earlier titles because they know we have favorites and we like to use those. So I'm not sure what the reason behind the roster cut is but I know that this alone will leave a lot of this Gaia fans disappointed. 
Another change about the classes is that the monsters now function the same as humans. Aside from the mega change removal, they can now also pick up and throw characters. You still need to be careful about throwing prinnies though as they still explode. And finally, the item world is a very important area where a lot of post-game grinding happens. This time around you don't have to do this all by yourself, but you can send out some of your characters to level up the items instead, and you can even tell them what to focus on during their adventure. There are more things that are different, but if you are looking whether it's worth picking up this guy as 6 or not, I think these are the most important changes to note. Which brings me to my final thoughts. Seeing as I've played other Disgaea games and even going through post-game grinds and finding the Super Boss Ball, I kind of know what to expect whenever a new Disgaea game drops. But Disgaea 6 is the first time where it feels like a lot has changed and maybe a little bit too much. I know times are changing and that existing franchises want to appeal to a broader audience, which is something I really support by the way, but I feel that some changes have made too big of an impact on what the existing fans love so much. The notoriously insane numbers are more insane than ever because the level cap now goes into the millions and the damage you can do easily goes into the quadrillions. Big numbers are always fun but at this point it basically becomes unreadable for me, especially when comparing the stats to your enemies throughout the story. My biggest issue with the game is definitely the performance and this especially hurts knowing that there is a functioning PS4 version out in Japan that doesn't suffer from this. Other than that, I'm not happy with the removal of so many iconic classes and mega change. That said, I am really happy that they made the post-game grind more accessible, and with this I mean the combination of auto-battle, auto-repeat, demonic intelligence, and being able to send out your characters to level items in the item world. As mentioned before, I don't have as much free time as I did back when I grinded for hundreds of hours in this Gaia 3 and 4. The new system still requires me to set up and plan out the grinds, but hours later I can just reap the benefits and hope to be strong enough to defeat Baal. Will it be as rewarding as before? Probably not, but without these features fighting Baal is something I would skip this time around. In closing, this Gaia 6 still looks like a Disgaea game, it sounds like a Disgaea game and it plays like a Disgaea game, and I'm glad we have a new entry in the series. I haven't gone through all of the post-game stuff yet, but so far this Gaia 6 is my least favorite out of the ones I've played, which are this Gaia 1 through 4 and D2. That doesn't mean this Gaia 6 is bad, it just has some issues that others didn't have and I think they went a bit overboard with the compromises they made for newcomers. If I were new to this Gaia though, I would probably just be mad at the performance and confused by the insanely high numbers, but overall happy with everything else. And that's precisely why I'm curious to hear what you all think after watching this video or playing the game for yourself, and also if you are new to this Gaia or if you've played the previous games. Make sure to share your thoughts in the comments down below and we'll talk about it. My schedule is pretty packed at the moment, but I'm going to try to make at least a beginner's guide for the demonic intelligence system as it can be somewhat overwhelming. So if you want to see that, make sure to subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter so you don't miss out. And with that in mind, I want to thank you all for watching and until next time.